this is uh, picking up with Romans uh, chapters 7 through 11 or so, 10 to 12. These are the chapters that Christianity just holds its hat on outside of Isaiah 53. As the reason God left the Jews and went to the Gentiles, according to the uh, teachings of Apostle Paul. Now, Paul was not an original disciple. As a matter of fact, he was a uh, Pharisee, a man who was said to have memorized, memorized the Jewish Bible. Which is, is kind of nice to have when you can tell people the Jewish Bible says whatever you want it to say. And they can't check you out. And then we find out, and I'm going to show you, a very serious lack of reasoning on his part. This is from Romans. And I'm going to start in chapter 7, verse 5. And... <clears throat> Basically, Paul is saying the law, under the law, now the law is the law of the teachings that God gave Moses at Sinai or Oreb and uh, told him, give this to all the Israelites who are Jews of my laws and commandments. The covenant between myself and them. And he says you cannot become righteous under that law. There's only one law you can become righteous under. The new law, the new covenant, the new covenant. Instead of the one in Jeremiah 31 that, according to Christianity and Hebrews and Paul, has been usurped. It is no longer, I will make you uh, sin free and Torah be written on your hearts. It is now, the law is obsolete. You can only be righteous by believing in Jesus Christ. Now let's see what he thinks about the law, the law of God. Also, also often called the law of Moses. But in this scripture, this is a Gideon Bible. Christian Gideon Bible, it's um, English Universal Translation or something like that. But uh, I'm going to read from it, and I don't know if I'm going to read all of it. I'm pretty much directed as I go. I usually have my, I'm used to having in these videos, the two books that God dictated to me, and I'm just repeating chapters, and I know everything about them. So this won't be quite as clean but um, one reason or another, I think he'll get me through it. Anyway, starting on chapter 7, verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work to our members, to bear fruit to death. Our members. Now he's writing this to the Romans. And so it might be to a particular faction. And they have members of their faction. By and large. Paul is talking about his hands. His feet. And other members. Okay. That's why he says members. He didn't say my hands. If you're going to be talking about sin. We'll get to that. You know if you're going to kill somebody, if you're going to steal something, if you're going to run away, you run with your feet, steal with your hands, kill with your hands, shoot with your hands, uh, not necessarily back then, but let's see what he says, which were aroused by the law, remember that statement, you cannot imagine what you're about to hear. But now, verse 6, but now we have been delivered from the law. We've been delivered from the law. We don't need the law. The law of Moses. 
the laws and commandments God gave Moses and or for the Jewish people. Having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said you shall not covet <laughs> okay try to stay this try to stay with me now, this is the people who believe in human sacrifice and by the blood of Jesus Christ they are sin free justified and go to heaven because they believe in him faithfulness and that's what is about to be taught to you but let's look at the fallacy of all this this man just said it is the a law that arouses sin. Because when the law says, do not cover, covet your neighbor's wife, he says, that makes you covet your neighbor's wife. And therefore, you cannot be righteous. The law makes you covet the nature's wife, your neighbor's wife. And if you think, oh, it's going to get stronger and stronger. The law says, do not steal. And what he is saying, his reasoning is, that makes you steal. Well, I wouldn't have stole if I was told not to. Now, you know, you can read this and get, get going with this blasphemy that he's speaking. And you can say, well, I know what he means. I know he, I'm not quite getting it. Some things don't go together, but uh, you know where you end up? And Jesus died for us all. We're sin free. We go to heaven if you but believe it. That's where it all ends up. You can say anything you want. You can say anything you want. But if you end with, there was a human sacrifice for you by God, which... <laughs> I may speak of it one more time. God made a human sacrifice to human beings. You know, the man's had it right. Human sacrifice means you're trying to appease the gods. You sacrifice the human blood. is the strongest thing you can find because you know life comes from blood. Drain it, the person dies. Offer that to God. Maybe he'll show favor. Christians believe God made a human sacrifice, gave blood to them so they could so they could disobey his commandments and laws. And the reasoning of Christians and Gentiles is no different than what I'm showing you right here. And the best is yet to come. For whatever reason, God, maybe to slow me down and ease my anger a little bit because I know him too well to think any of that could be possibly true. But he's not letting me wear my glasses. And this is an old Gideon's. We got this in the second year. The second year of my uh, 13 years in the fire of refinement. At a hotel, he was taking me from the land of the living, the world. Running out of money, nowhere to live, no car. And uh, we were in a week by week hotel. You know, I just, whatever he told me to do on any given day is what I did, including terminate my licenses as a lawyer. And I had done pretty good. I was board certified specialist in oil, gas, and mineral law, and I also had a license in Hawaii, which I had never used. It was kind of my retirement backup. It turns out my retirement is going to be a little bit different than I thought. But bear with me, keeping all that in mind, and I will skip some verses and I'll let you know when I do, but the easiest thing would be to find this online um, and, and try, it's Gideon's, Romans, chapter 7, verse 5 is where I started. It 
So I ended up with verse 6, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. Okay, that's where I ended up. Picking back up with verse 8. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, that's the law, produced in me all manner of evil desire, far apart from the law, sin was dead. The law created sin in him. Now keep this in mind. These are people who believe that there are demons in you. What he's getting to is the law created a demon in him. Just keep that in mind. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived. And I died. And the commandment, which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. Sin deceived him, taking life by the law. And by it killed me. Therefore the law is holy. And the commandment holy. And just and good. Okay. Let's see you back up that statement. After what you just said. Has then. What is good become death to me. Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death to me to what is good. So that sin to the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. Sold under sin. For what am I doing? I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. What I will to do, I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Okay, Paul? If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. Is everybody catching on to the lack of reasoning in any of this? This is a man. This is Paul. This is in the year somewhere between 330 uh, and 70. Maybe 60 and 70. Okay, this is the year 2,220. You cannot imagine what it was really like back then. I can't, but I've had some help. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. I don't do it, he says. I don't do these things. Now, he said covet. He says covet the wife. I think it's something a little deeper. Just based on his words. But um, we're not done. <laughs> what does he say? It is no longer I who do it. I don't do this sin. I don't covet the wife. I don't steal. Or something worse. But sin that dwells in me.
Sin doesn't dwell in a person. Sin does not dwell in this age of knowledge. We know sin does not dwell in us. If we violate the laws of God, if we murder, if we kill, if we steal, etc., etc., we have sinned. Okay, but there's not a sin that dwells within us. I mean, we are of the body, and that, that causes us to sin because we want things, this, that, personal things, esteem things. Uh, we want to be comfortable, on and on and on. We violate these things that if we live by them, we wouldn't have so many problems. And that's why God gave us the laws. He says, I know, I know the world's harsh. It's perfect. It's what I want. It's for my heaven I'm making for the Jewish people and for my, uh, my script, my reality show for me to observe. I mean, you know, that's God. He, he makes that clear. But anyway, so Paul's got this problem and it's sin and the sin comes and is there and before him in his body because he reads God's laws. Don't covet, I covet. Don't steal, I steal. Don't do other things. Just what you hear his last words, it sounds like he's in such a spirit, he can't stop himself. He is compelled to do what he does. Now, I just leave it right there. He's compelled to do it. He can't stop himself. What is this person we're listening to? This great saint, this apostle, this the greatness of Christianity who took, who took God from the Jew and gave it to the Gentile. And they do it based on this reasoning that I give you today. And I <laughs> got no chapter seven. And I know I'm about to run out of my half hour time. Uh, pick him back up. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Are you going to help me? For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good I do not know. For the good that I will will to do, I do not do. But this evil, I will not to do, that I practice. Okay, I'm going to, well, let me finish up. Clearly, the Lord wants me to stop. Now, if I do what I will not, will, what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I don't do it. I don't want to do it, but since I do it, it's not me, it's sin. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills in to do good. For I delight in the law of good according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I think. God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself, so the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. The 
Thank you very much for listening. There's going to be much more on this. The reasoning of Christianity. The great saint, Apostle Paul, who does that which he does not want to do. And when he reads a commandment that thou shalt not covet, he cannot stop himself from coveting. And he has members of his body that he also cannot stop to doing things he knows to be wrong, though we know not what they are. But if he will just believe in the resurrection of Christ, that he died for what Paul's afflicted with, he calls it something, something from the messenger Satan. If he will just concentrate on Christ day in and day out, he is righteous. He does not have to be an observant Jew. And Paul is a Jew. He was a Pharisee. He used to kill Gentiles and Christians. Before Jesus talked to him, he says, That's who told the Gentiles, God let the Jew. But God tells you in every single place, every single time you see a quote in the Christian Bible, the New Testament, that God has refused them, God has abandoned them, God no longer wants them, then what you will find at the end of it, God says, I always take you back. Thank you very much. Picking back up with chapter 8, Romans. Uh, this is actually called <laughs> A Letter to the Romans from Paul. Chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, it's the sin of the body, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. Those are the laws, the commandments, rules and teachings of God that he gave Moses to give to the Israelites, the Jewish people. Okay, that's sin and death. Because if you follow the law, you will sin. It makes you sin by telling you what sin is. Oh, the contrary. The whole reason, even for Leviticus, the animal, sacrificial, atonement, worship, laws of God, were to tell these people what sin was. It is wrong to covet your wife, your neighbor's wife. It is wrong to steal. It is wrong to do this, because they did not know. Now, I don't know if you've ever been around any peoples who are totally unlearned. They've never been to school. They have no reasoning capabilities. You know, some some uh, tribal people you might find in uh, old Africa in the 1910s, 1900s, 18, late 1800s. People who just, no teachings whatsoever. They had no idea. And it was just, you know, this is what we like to do. This is what we do. Feels good. God said, well, that will really mess up your life later on. But uh, that's what he's saying. And he's saying that Jesus is the final commandment of law, of the law. It's like all, all of God's law, you cannot find righteousness because that law is sin and death. The only way to find righteousness is to believe in Jesus Christ. This is what he's saying. I'm going to keep reading. You're going to see this. I just, if I tell you beforehand, it's easier to understand it when I get to it. That's what he's saying. Believe in Jesus, you're righteous. You cannot be righteous in the law. Because the law makes you sin, which is death. Okay, just means you don't have eternal life. When you die, when you die, that's it. 
You're not justified in the eyes of God. You don't go forward if you're observant in the law. Wait till you see how he does that one. Of course you are. Why do you have Yom Kippur? It's because you're observing the law and God recognizes of his people as of all people, of all humankind that he created. I understand the flesh that John's talking about. I know people are going to sin. I know there are people who are intelligent. I know there are people who are not intelligent. I know there are people who cannot reason. I know there are people that can. Okay? I understand this. I know if I forgive all people of their sins, all of my chosen, all Jews, cross face the earth, that does not mean they're all going to heed me. I am God. Do you think I don't know that? That's what he would tell you. Because you read this covenant in Jeremiah, which, by the way, the Christian said it is obsolete because God made a mistake. That's another thing you never hear about. But... We're going to get to it, of that you can't be sure. But let's, uh, let's carry on. Just keep on with this thing with uh, Apostle Paul. For what the law could not do, let me finish up with verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, the likeness of a human being, but, you know, unblemished. He, he never sinned. Unless you read the Gospels, of course. His own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. God condemned sin in the flesh. God made sin in the flesh. <laughs> he made human beings. He knew that we say that is one good looking person, male or female, either side. I don't care if she's married, I couldn't go talk to her. I don't care. That's us. That's people. You think God didn't know we were going to be like that? That's what he loves about us. But who, who can ride the straight and narrow, be observing of, huh? You know, but that's really not the right thing to do. And I know that because of the teachings of morality and philosophy that God gave us the Jewish people. You know, there's right and there's wrong. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to get back to the high holidays because I, I really try so hard and I try to be a light to the world and show people you can beat me all you want, but I'm still going to be a good person. Uh, I, I might need to go to Yom Kippur. Nah, I've heard God forgive all my sins, and I'm glad of that, because I was worried about a few of them. But I think I'm going to really, now that I see God's back on the earth, and it, it's not just, we're the Jews, and we have this history where God only talked to us. The whole world only knows about him because of us. And the whole world has done these horrible things to us. But he's really going to do it again? It's not just biblical times. He, he said, uh, time is coming. And there will be a day of the Lord. And I have a new covenant. And I want a prophet like Moses. I'm going to talk to you again. Well, he's doing it. Chapter 8 is kind of long. i got to hurry. I'm not going to make this a one-hour video. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to reread three, verse three. This is where I was, and then I'm going to pick up. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did sending his own his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Ask yourself why. Right here, right here, ask yourself why. Why would he do that? What's he getting? The man sacrificed human beings so God would give them rain and God, their deities, it's not God, their deities would give them fertility and this and that, favor them and make them strong as a people. And they gave them the strongest thing they could find, blood, because blood is life. Take the blood from a human being, he dies. Okay, what God, why, why was God doing this? Why? Uh, how did the Gentiles appease God? Or would he, what? What was he asking them to give him? Uh, I give you my son. What are you going to give me? This was human sacrifice back. We give you a human. Uh, give us stuff. And so God gave it to the to the Gentiles. Okay, I gave him a son. What are you going to give him? What are you going to give him? It's just the reasoning. None of it makes any sense. What are you going to give him? Uh, we ain't getting anything. Uh, well, we're gonna go to heaven and be with him. It'll probably make him happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know God, people. And that's the. Okay, that, can I continue? Holy Spirit. Oh, this may start out small. Start this whole thing. All these videos. But it's not going to end small. And those in the wake can either wake up, outreach Judaism, Jews for Judaism, or you can sit back and get torn to asunder by the wrath of God through me. And yes, people, tell. Tell. So, verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnally. That usually means sex. Okay, again, covet? Eh, I don't think this is what he's talking about. Is he a pedophile? I don't know. I mean, he hates what he does, but he keeps doing it. The saint, the apostle of Christ, who convinced Gentiles that God no longer favored the Jews and performed human sacrifice for them. To have eternal life in righteousness. Righteousness, if they simply believe in him. Don't follow the laws. The law of Moses. Their book says the Jesus died despising the law of Moses. Huh. What a religion. What a religion. And the righteous servant of God will tell you this. There's no righteousness in believing God commits human sacrifice. There's no righteousness in any of that. Righteousness is God's commandments and the law. If the law makes you go violate the law and sin, well, that's on you. The law is for you to be righteous in the eyes of God. Be an observant Jew. Because if you're not an observant Jew, Christians, Gentiles, if you don't convert, you don't go to the house of prayer of God. That's only for Jews. And I've heard you Christians say differently. It's because you can't read and understand at the same time. You say the Jews are blind? They don't see Jesus? Prophesied in their book and they don't see him? Describing Isaiah 53, well, no man of any kind of intellect could. 
he doesn't match anything except being a sinner. And he is. I'll ride up this. All the prophets say of me, I will ride this. I know, we've done it a hundred times. Into Jerusalem, and there the Gentiles will crucify me, spate me, hold me in no account, and kill me. Now I'll rise on the third day. All the prophets say of me, I'll ride this ass. The Spirit just said, Donkey, it's donkey. I said, I know it's ass. We're talking the whole time. I'm trying. You know, if I seem sound disjointed every so often, it's because I'm getting, you know, if the Holy Spirit can be here, He's here, they're talking. You know, and I'm trying to get this done. God's blinding my eyes. I can barely see. He won't let me wear my glasses. He says, this is how I want it. It's perfect. Now, this is not a perfect presentation. I mean, I haven't even gotten all, well, I'm chapter 8. i got to get to all the way to 10 at least. This, and this is the Christian. I mean, this is their whole thing. I mean, you got Hebrews, and then you got uh, Romans, and this is why God left the Jew. And, you know, faithfulness. Jesus Christ. It, it, well, you say Hebrews. What's Hebrews? Well, in Hebrews... He says, the covenant of God, the one he made with the Jews. Listen to this. Uh, I, I guess we're going to, I didn't even come close to finish it. But. Oh, there's noise outside. Okay, I'm going to pick up. Uh, what do I know? Uh, somebody hedging the bushes. Uh, I'll pick back up with this. Thank you very much for listening. And you should be listening, especially Jews. All Jews, even those who are... out of the camp because they believe in Yahshua. You can't believe in a false idol and call yourself Jew, okay? There's a, a good bit more after chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 3. Uh, you can read it for yourselves. It doesn't have a lot to do with what I'm talking about. Uh, picking up with chapter 9. I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness to the Holy Spirit. I am not lying. Well, let's just jump past chapter 9. And I do want you to read it. And go to chapter 10. Brethren, first verse. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. They're under the law. That's what he's saying. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. What do you just say? They have a zeal for God, but they're stupid. That's what he just said. Okay. Paul, who does the things that you do not want to do, but because of sin in you, you cannot help but do it, and you hate yourself for it. Okay, so uh, let's see what else we have. 
Verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Okay, God gave them the law. They submit to it. They are observant. That's why we know they are Jews. Listen to this sentence one more time. You know, again, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of rhetoric. It's like it's like listening to Hitler on the stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever he did, I don't know. And you know, and he just enthralled this people to the to do the most heinous acts on earth. And the only people second to that are the Christians. In particularly the missionaries. Do not forget, I am the wrath and I am the reckoning. I'm the reckoning against the rabbis of Judaism and I am the wrath against Christianity. The vengeance of God in Isaiah 51. I walk by myself until I build the following of his servants who want to do the same. Because we work for him. He's not going to burn down all evil, which would take down all Christianity. He's not going to destroy Christianity. There's not going to be utter destruction to this Christianity as far as, you know, the people and the lies and the people who believe in it. No, we take this word to him. I'm going to bring back one more prophet. And he's going to be a prophet who is so great. He is like Moses. He is like Elijah. He is like David. He is like the righteous servant who makes them many righteous. And he brought one man, a Gentile. And anybody who wants to contend with that can contend with me. And when you contend with me, you contend with God. I'll carry forward. For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone who believes is the end of the law. It's the end of the law. Yeah, the law makes you sin. We don't want anything to do with the law. Do you, can anybody comprehend what kind of sense this makes? It's, it's called zero. Hmm. Okay, so I can steal, I can covet, I can do all kind of evil, and it's okay if I believe in Jesus. Because that's what the Christians do. They go to prisons. Uh, Mr. Death Row Man, what did you do? Uh, I killed my wife, I raped my children, I raped my neighbor's children, and uh, uh, I killed everybody that I saw. Because that's who I am. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, what if I do? If you believe in Jesus and he's your Savior, you're sin forgiven, you go to heaven. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know what? I believe in that guy. What's his name again? This religion, it, just, it makes my blood curl. Follow the commandments of the law, and you have the law of God, and that makes you a sinner. God created everything. He came down and said, these are my laws. This is my law. This is how you do. And he did it for us. Live your life this way with all the things that a human being has, and I know what they are because I made you, but do it this way. Be a Jew. Be observant. Understand these laws. And understand your God. I don't fool around. Look what they've been through because I chose them. Well, that's what happens. And I guarantee you that's what happens to the righteous servant of God. He doesn't spend 30 years of his life suffering free. He doesn't spend 30 years of his life 
sin free. Jesus spent one day. God made me up to be the antithesis of that man who doesn't exist and never did. It's a story. No man ever lived like that. I'm the man who fits Isaiah 53. I know. No, God's let my anger. I got news for you. If you think this is anger, you didn't know me before he spoke to me at age 50. Before that, you could barely talk to this person. That's just who I was. Ezekiel said, I went in bitterness. The Spirit of God came upon me. I went in bitterness in the fury of my spirit. Moses killed a man because he was angry. Jesus got mad and he killed somebody. Think about that. That's not a loose statement. God wants you to think about that. And then he ran away. He didn't he said, oh no, I'm going to get caught. Did he go fess up? No. Took off. But he ends up being one of the finest men that ever walked this planet. And one day God will send one more to like him. And his name's not Joshua. No, his name's Keith Ellis McCarty. I never know where these videos are going to go. For whoever calls on my name of the Lord shall be saved. This is chapter 10. In him God's going to tell me where to pick back up. I had to wait a moment. He can make me where my uh, where I am like ice. I don't feel anything, and, and I've earned it through thirteen years of suffering. And uh, my mom's dying as I sit here. She's almost a vegetable. Uh, my sister is got all kinds of emotional issues, and she does very bad things around here. My dad's 93. Uh, he doesn't have the reasoning that he once had. He's always loved me. But um, just being a person who talks about these things. I mean, I can't talk to him about it. I haven't had it in years. It's just, uh, you, uh, and that's funny too, because, you know, Jesus said, or in the Gospels it said, a prophet cannot be known in his own house. And um, it, it's hard to make people understand. This is really happening. And I know back in the day of the biblical times, in Judaism particularly, you see all these references, that uh, there's prophets, that, you know, people just jumping up. Oh, God has spoken to me. And this is from an illiterate society. If, you know, if you had charisma and this or that, People are going to listen to you. Ah, God's talking to you. Okay, but how do you know? Well, that's why it was hard to decide what books go into the Hebrew Bible. Uh, you know, which prophets do we take in? There's books left out. Enoch and this and that. I'm, I've never looked at them for the most part. But... Um, The wealth of information I'm giving and the uh, career, well, if you knew me beforehand, you would know that this is not the same person that we once knew. He looks like him, sounds like him, but that's not who we ever thought he was. But anyway, God wants me to catch, put a half hour on this side of the video and catch back up. So, let's see where we're at. For most, uh, chapter 10, verse 3. I, I, and I'm trying to get to where uh, Apostle Paul, who has this great sin affliction that has nothing to do with him. He just, 
It just happens. So he's okay, right? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't help it. I did it. That's not me. I don't want to do it, but I did it anyway. But it's not me. It's sin. I don't know. You just got to walk that forward a little bit to human sacrifice. So, chapter, I may not get to chapter 11. This may be it. Chapter 10, uh, verse 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does these things Shall live by them. Okay, I just I was just informed. I just mentioned you that Paul opens up with uh, nine or eight, eight, nine, I think it is. With I am not lying. Get ready to listen to the lies. These are all lies. Verse eight, uh, verse six. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Quote. Do not say in your hearts, quote, who will ascend into heaven, close quote. That is, to bring a Christ down from above. False. Verse 7. Or, quote, who will descend into the abyss, close quote. Paragraph. That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. Close paragraph. Verse 8. But what does it say? Quote, The word is near you, to your mouth, and in your heart. Close quote. Paragraph. That is, the word of faith which we preach. Close quote, close paragraph. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That means you will be righteous. Believe in him, you're righteous. The law, you cannot be righteous by being an obedient, a good citizen, a good person, good to your neighbor. You cannot be righteous if you're just good, people. You cannot be righteous if you're just a good person. Help those, contribute to charity, do mitzvahs, observe what God says, don't covet your neighbor's wife, don't steal, don't... No, 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 that will make you righteous. No, 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 that will make you sin. The minute you leave, I'm gonna... can't covet her. I'm coveting. Such a blasphemy. It's such a it's such a, it's such a heresy to God. The, the entire religion is heretical. If if that's the word. Heretical. It just drives me crazy. That if you confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe that, well, I don't. I don't believe it. So if I practice the law, I convert to Judaism, I become a Jew, and I do everything the law requires. I cannot be righteous. I will not see heaven. And yet God says, God, what are you doing? Isaiah 65, God, what are you doing? Uh, I'm making a new heaven. What else you doing, God? What's this all about? I'm making a new earth. Huh. Okay. What's the new heaven? I'm going to have people that aren't like angels. I'm going to have people that form their own personalities through strife and peril. In the entirety of the world, hating them, I am building a heaven for the Jew. And the Jew only. But the name Israel shall endure. That's what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Good to hear. 
I, I thought you were sacrificing human beings down here, including some make believe son of yours. Verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession to make unto salvation. For the scripture says, back to the line, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. Greek means Gentile. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. This is now going to the Gentiles. For, quote, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, close quote. It's got nothing to do with Gentiles. But anyway, let's move on to this non-liar. And he told you before he started the chapter. I mean, yeah, made it clear. How then shall they call on him to whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Oh, well, that's interesting. Where did those words come from? Uh, check out Isaiah 52, 15. Who can believe that which they have never heard or beheld, etc., etc.? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And hey, Jews, rabbis, how are you going to get a new covenant without a new Moses, the one, the pro, the Moses to come? Why, why, why is he Joshua, jo Toby, a singer? Why is he? Uh, how are you going to hear it? you got a covenant to come. You had one before. It's kind of like one, two. One, two. Uh, covenant one came through Moses. Prophet to Moses to come. Uh, that would be covenant two. Huh. God has, God's not going to let up people. You that love him, he's personal, I, I you know, God made me like him a whole bunch early on. We watched a lot of his stuff. But I can tell you this. God is livid at that man. Livid. And he'll never see the scroll of remembrance. Unless he does the miraculous. We'll see if he's got what it takes. We'll see if he's got something. The Mushyak, myself, can look down and say, okay, that was a good job. That was good. That was tough. But you have no idea what he's put me through. You got to really shine to get the Mushyak's seal of approval, so to speak. You think I'm coming down like Jesus and I'm going to make your life in this world love you? You think I'm going to be your best friend? You're going to have to make me be your best friend. You're going to have to do it by hearing God's prophet. And for some reason, God's let Michael Scoback skate because all he ever told me is listen to him. He had me turn in. I don't know how many videos it was. This, that, that, and another. Where he comes out and he says, somewhere in there, our sages say, and God would just make me just fall down on the floor, so to speak. Our sages say, I don't care what your sages say. They're men. They're not men in divine beings. There is a difference, Jews. And, and this is part of biblical times. Look at what you read. Look at what happened. Look at the different things. Look at the miracles. And all of a sudden, something different that you've ever known. These people back then, something different they ever knew is all of a sudden happening to them. That's what's happening to you. And yet you want to sit down and you want to count me plagued. You want to count me afflicted. You want to count me shunned and despised. But you just keep doing it because... 
You keep hiding, little people. That's what I call you. And quite frankly, I am to move on. And I promise you this, outreach and Jews for Judaism, every word you just heard came straight from God. Every word. And you better quake in that. You better show some fear. You think he's not looking at you? God says my 30 minutes is about to run out. And I don't even know where I'm at. But my blood just gristled. Because I live with God and I've lived with him 13 years. I know. I know what he feels about Christians. And then we get, not to the rabbis in general. Because I don't know, outside of these two groups... Outreach and Jews for Judaism. Outside of two groups, I don't know what rabbis think. Now, there's a few here in Texas that think the same thing. Isaiah 53. You know, it's so short-sighted. What, what's God going to do? Well, where's the new covenant? How's he going to deliver? He delivered one. He had a man that's called Moses. I'm seeing another man called Moses. He's going to have to come in the future. How are you going to know him? Well, i got a description of him called the righteous servant. I mean, you know, you know why? Because they because they're lazy. Just like he says in the Bible, they're lazy. They're drowsing dogs. They're, oh no, they're scripture, huh? They're drowsing dogs. They go their own way. They won't listen. And that's just what we're dealing with today. But you know what? God's going to break it down. He's going to break it down. He's going to break it down with me. Because you know who I am? I'm the descendant of David. Would you want to contend with David? How many people did David kill just when he was with, exiled against Israel for over a year and a half and he was under Ashkenaz or, well, I don't know the names. He went out every day killing enemies of God. This man, King David, killed hundreds of people. Elijah, 600 Baal. Okay? Now, you start to get a picture. It's a metaphor. Ezekiel, I went away in the bitterness of my spirit, in the fury of my spirit. That's the kind of people he gets. He doesn't get religious people who are all like, oh, take care of me. I pray to you to take care of my problems. No, that's not what we're talking about. No, we're talking about somebody that says, you get up on your own feet, you take care of your goddamn self. He didn't say that. God had me say that for a purpose. That doesn't bother him. And it doesn't bother him with me. You can't imagine where he is taking me. I, I don't like it. So, okay. It's an example. I am still in the fire of refinement. Keith does not like to say things like that. I know that is offensive to say. So I won't say it. I mean, that's how most of us are. I won't say it. It's offensive. And, uh, but God says, you're not Keith anymore. You're my servant. And you're going to say what I had you say. And when it hurts you, and I, I, you know, I can only change that so much. You know, I've been changing it in the boot camp of God. Uh, he applies his power. So it, it won't affect, it, it's already not affecting me. I can actually feel it. And, and for people who will want to learn what a man of divine beings is, I, I'm not like any other man on the planet. And you would think that's what the Jews are looking for. But they have to wade through their rabbis first. This is really for the people. And, and we want them to. I mean, God's telling them. Uh, Y'all can understand this more than anything. This doesn't happen. Uh, somebody doesn't have this kind of knowledge without you getting it. And uh, I said, well, God, uh, we're still shunned and despised, the kind of plague spent and afflicted by God. 
And he says, Keith? And I say, yeah, but I know. I've been with him too long. It's going to end up just the way he wants it. And he does not care who gets trampled down in between outreach. In particular, you for some reason. I think it has something to do with going Christian and saying, Isaiah 53, 10 is literally translated to be, according to Toby, a singer, an offering for guilt of rams. Really, Toby a singer? <laughs> I won't even tell you what the Holy Spirit is to say. But, you have a great following. You're not the smartest man that's ever walked around. I mean, you got a lot of intellect, you can bring in stuff, but you can't think too well. Uh, bring it together. Bring it together and bring all these people and you tell them who I am. And you tell them why I am. And you tell them why Judaism got it wrong. It's explained to you. You're supposed to get it wrong. You know, can you stand up? Or are you too arrogant to do it? Are you too arrogant? I don't know. I keep waiting for my camera. It hasn't been a half an hour. <laughs> do, I, do I have anything to say to Toby? <laughs> yeah, I do. Toby, this is Keith. Ha, there's three people in here. You've been listening to God. Uh, this is Keith. This is who I used to be. They, they call it old Keith. Run. Run and don't look back. <laughs> okay. Do what they say to do. You, you really can't escape it. I think you're a good guy. I hope we're friends one day. But in the meantime, every time we do a video, you're going to get scathed. So, it's going to catch up with you, all And I really need to get this thing going because, you see, God can't go to Israel without me. I know you don't understand. Spirit of light's upon you, and God is in the Spirit. You don't understand that, but it's in the videos, particularly Ezekiel. It's, it's what God always does. It's how he communicates with the world. And he came back one last time to straighten.